How's it going YouTube? Today we have my 2004 Jetta here and we're going to be replacing the main radiator. So first of all we're going to go ahead and start off by kind of pulling out the headlights, getting some of that stuff out of the way so that we have better access when we're starting to drain the radiator and do stuff like that. So the first step that we have is for us one Torx bit. There should be, uh, I mean this headlight's missing two over here that headlight's missing one. You should have a total of four of those. In my car, these are T20 uh, little screws. So now that we have that out, we'll go ahead and come back here, unplug our headlights. Now when you're taking your hood latch apart, make sure you're paying attention to how it all goes together. However, in my case, my hood latch is broken and I cannot seem to figure out how to fix it. So in a future video, I will be installing hood pins in this. Just as a quick and easy and cheap way, since these hood latches, I think are like 35 bucks a piece. Car came with two of them. I couldn't get either one to work. Go ahead and get these out. Those are not T20. Looks like a T25 fits that. Maybe a T30 also. A little nut on the bottom of that one's just spinning. Let me see if this side does the same thing. Nope, that side comes right out. So I'll have to get a pair of pliers to hold the nut on the back side of that other one probably, but we'll get there in a second. I'm kind of organizing my bolts also in the order that I pull them out. So when I, uh, I'm just doing like top to bottom for all the bolts in the order. So all these are going in the same little line. That way when I'm putting the car back together, as long as I do everything in the same order, I can go from like bottom to top of my list and my bolts should mostly be in order. So I got this one here. It's not like falling out, it just seems like it wasn't secured very well. I'm gonna say I assume, let me see if you guys can see it. Well, my whole like bumper just dropped off of the car on the uh, driver's side. I assume we should have a couple more bolts than that, but that didn't happen. Looks like I probably have one T20 on the inside of this. So now let me go ahead and take this over to the other side of my garage. Now we have the bumper out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get the headlights taken out and then we'll start uh, working on this ballast piece. Trying to see what I can find for like catch cans and stuff. So what I have at the moment is I have a larger bucket and then I have a smaller ball bucket that I'm gonna slide under there, open the pet cock on the bottom, let it drain and then just kind of Keep emptying it into the larger one. Real quick now, there's like four bolts on this front uh, bar down here. And it looks like if I take those, I should just be able to pull that whole crash bar off or bracing, whatever you want to call it. Looks like there might be a couple smaller screws in the middle also, but it doesn't look like it'll be that hard to get it off. couple screws holding it and then I'm going to take off this and it's going to pull a whole bunch of stuff. I don't really know if that's what I want to do because it looks like it's going to drop the AC system too. But for now we're going to go ahead and, like this line's empty it feels like, so I'm going to go ahead and take this coolant line off. There we go. Oh. 
Let's get our little drip tray over there because there's some coming out. And while that's going, we'll go ahead and get this other clamp that is the, looks like one of the, yeah, the upper radiator line. Okay. Got the other side of the upper radiator line off. Looks like there might be some just holding in there. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. And we should just be able to wiggle off the upper raid hose. Yeah, I'm bleeding. Oh well. Got that off. Let me get my uh, bleeding to stop real quick and we'll be back. So looking down the driver's side of your radiator, right in that corner, there's a little knob at the bottom. You turn it clockwise and then uh, push it, well, it really it's pull it out, but it goes toward the back of the car. And at that point, it'll start leaking uh, out of your drain on your radiator. So I went ahead and I did that. I got almost nothing out of there, which I knew that this car had a leak. Uh, something on the passenger bottom corner is cracked, it looks like. But at this point, we went ahead and drained the radiator. So now I'm gonna go and pull the lower radiator hose off and I'll try to get you guys down there to get a view on the bottom side. So this is the view from uh, like the driver's side looking across. This is that little knob I talked about. So if you push it toward the front of the car, turn it right, it closes off the drip. Turn it uh, counterclockwise, open it. And I mean, I've already drained it. I didn't get much out because I had a leak but that's, that's the process for that. So all I'm gonna do is come down here with that same pair of pliers and pull this bottom connection. I might get a little more leak out of there, so I'm gonna be careful about that. Okay. So I just ended up taking off that hose on the back that I was messing with, got some vice or uh, channel locks on it and kind of pried it off. Just watch, cause yeah, you got some uh, filling down in that hose. I don't think it'll ever fill our container, but better safe than sorry. Okay. I will figure out what comes next and get back to you. Okay, so I went ahead, got the bottom hose off, can't remember if I mentioned that. And then we went ahead and the bottom side of this hose, which is your power steering hose, I was thinking it was coolant, went ahead and unplugged it, so now I have uh, coolant and power steering fluid mixed in that container, I'll have to deal with that. So after I got that unplugged, I came down here and there were four T25 volts that were holding the radiator to this piece. And then I still didn't feel like I had quite enough room between the shroud and the engine back here. So I came over here and there were two T30 bolts, pulled that out and just kind of slid the whole uh, bracing across the front forward, which gave me a bunch more room here. So now I'm going to kind of see if I can just kind of play with this and wiggle it around and get it to either come up or go down. I was slowly trying to pull that piece forward and maintain everything because I was thinking these coolant lines were directly attached into this piece so I couldn't pull it off. They're not attached. All I have is a small uh, electrical cable of something and then my hood latch. The hood latch I'm going to take out because as I said we're going to hood pins on this one but that just opened it up very nicely. I can go ahead and get my little uh, hood latch cable out of the way and then I'll be able to just pull it out get any last minute. Uh, remaining connectors in there. Just pulled this cable around the side. Now you have your, uh, I guess that's what, your AC condenser? Or not your condenser, but AC. Just go ahead and you have four bolts on it. Take those off. That should fall forward. We'll be a little closer to getting it out. So this whole situation here quickly escalated, as you can see by the uh, saws all on the ground over there. So essentially, I had the whole thing leaning forward. I went ahead and slid the bumper out after disconnecting the uh, cable for the release. But what I was running into was, my first problem was this bolt here that I needed to get out was totally rusted. And that was something that 
helps hold the fan to the radiator. So as you can see, I went ahead and zipped that. Then realized that one was rusted. Then realized the one down there wasn't looking so hot either. So I went ahead and normally you take the fans off and then you can just slide the radiator up and out of this little, uh, whoops, this little like uh, recess that it sits in. But you can also, what I had to do was take a flathead screwdriver. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. <clears throat> I had to take a flathead screwdriver, put it here between uh, this metal and this. And then just pry this a little bit out to pop this side of the radiator out. Came down to the bottom, got the one screw that was still holding that to the radiator part. So now it's totally free. I just have some wires here. But, but, I now think I need to order a new fan piece. Because I saw Zold 1, the other one's stripped out. This one isn't looking so good. This one, top one up here came out fine. But, and I know that one of my two fans isn't working. And I'm not sure if that is a fan issue, a power coming in issue. I was going to troubleshoot it after we had all this like swapped over. But I think if I can just get a new fan assembly with fans, that way I should know my fan's good. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish disconnecting. I got this one off, which you just kind of pull it out. And I don't know if I'll be able to do this one-handed. There it goes. You just like twist it back and then pull it up and out. And then you figure out there's your little catch. Is that not? It goes from the other side. So you kind of put the catch in and pull it out, and it should just unplug here. I know you guys can't see anything. Give me a second. Yep, I had to use two hands for it. So just push down on the pin on the passenger side of the car, pull them apart, they come right apart. All I have left is this one connector, which I'm still... I think it just pulls out, but I'm going to have to make sure, because it looks like it might be a... I don't even know, but I need to see what's going on. Probably a level sensor for the radiator. That last plug was this plug here. And it was really interesting to get out. I'm going to have to see how it reattaches to the new radiator. But yeah, as you can see, one, that bolt's really rusted. And then the leak was coming from over here. And yeah, that's rust. And yeah, I... The car was sitting for a bit, so I, I don't doubt that it rusted out while it was sitting. Stay tuned, because in an upcoming video on my buddy's Jetta, we're going to be engine swapping it. So we'll probably be very similar to this position, but the whole front taken apart when we get to that. So that's that's going to be a entertaining situation. But for now, that's where I'm going to leave off for tonight. If you guys like how it's going so far, by all means, you know, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know. I'm sure I didn't watch any videos on doing this before I did it. I am positive there's better ways to do it. But uh, in a couple days when these parts come in or, you know, a couple seconds for you guys, we'll go ahead and uh, keep going with this. But that's where I'm going to leave it off for now. Thank you. Here we are about a week later, so I went ahead and put the four bolts back in the front of the radiator to get the AC piece onto the radiator. And then I have my new fan shroud here, there's my old radiator and fan, but you just go ahead and put them in, and then you have your four bolts. Uh, three of the four bolts lined up well. The bolt down in this corner was totally off once I had these three lined up. I just went ahead and took a small drill bit drilled through this uh, plastic support in the spot that the uh, hole was for the new radiator and then I could just drop a screw straight in there. If you guys remember, I only got one of the four fan to radiator bolts off when I was taking this apart. So let me show you where I got the other three bolts from. Okay, so for the three bolts I didn't have, once I had this out, I was actually able to get a second one out. But then after that, where this has like the X supports over the fan, the T25 bolts that are right there are the same size that are here. My new one's got like studs, but I was able to just take these bolts out and put them around the edges to make that work. So at this point, we're back up to the number of bolts we need to have. I just kind of have it sitting on this bumper to support it. I believe my next step, I was going back and watching the video because as I said, it's been about a week and I can't remember exactly how this all came apart. But I think there's a way that I'm going to have to hook this radiator into the front bumper and then I can lift the whole front bumper up and then I go around and get connections. So that's what I'm going to kind of mess with. And once I figure out what it is, I'll come back and let you guys know. Another issue I'm running into is I know 
on the sides of your radiators, you have or side of the radiator, you have uh, two studs on each side where this clips on, and then I think that's where it screws into this front piece. I'm gonna have to play with it and see, but I only have one of these, so I'm gonna have to look around and figure out where my other three of these went off to. But that's that's my challenge for the next I don't know half hour or so while I figure this out. Oh look, there's the second one. So I have two, here's a third. Looking at my old radiator, which wasn't something I paid attention to, looks like the bottoms have like a little Y piece, so I'll pull this off of the old one, put it on the new one. Also, one thing I didn't note is this little black plastic piece on my old radiator came off the new one. It's just a slot that, or a, yeah, I don't know what you'd call it, a little holder that sits where the temp piece is. So you just, Unscrew that one with like a T40, I think, T50 maybe. And then go ahead and put the new one in. And the new one just spins in and out. I used a pair of channel locks to kind of get on it. But it's not, it's going into plastic. You don't have to tighten it too much or anything like that. But I just wanted to mention that while it was on my mind. I got this piece seated back into the front whatever. So pretty much what I did was on the driver's side, I said that little piece with the uh, two legs, little rubber piece that looked like this. I said it was on the bottom in the previous clip. It's actually on the top. But regardless, I went ahead and installed the little uh, hooks on this side and then slid the radiator, like set it down and slid it over into these and then I lifted up this side, got the bottom one in, put that down and screwed it in. I'm missing the top one on this side. I've looked around for a while and can't find it and I'm not positive it was there when this started. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, next step, I'm gonna go ahead for now and just pick this up, get the two side bolts put into their spots so this whole thing's held up on the car and then we'll start just going through and reconnecting pretty much everything. But yeah, it's it's coming together. I'm going to have to go back and watch my previous video that I recorded uh, about a week ago to see what screws go here. Because my little container of screws that had an order when I started this, none of them really seem to be uh, fitting in there and screw. Oh, I guess, dang, that one actually fits in there and screws. So I guess that's the one that we're going to use. I was sitting there and that was the only one I hadn't tried. So that one and... I should have another one. I'll find it, but we're getting there. We're almost done with this and then just everything else to do. Took me all of about 30 seconds to just roughly slip the front clip with the radiator and everything installed where it's supposed to go. Keep in mind your headlight wires down here. They tend to like, or at least in my case, they kept falling like down in the front. So I had to tuck those back up, make sure you got your stuff back here. And then as you're getting it up, you can set this piece that sits under the headlights on this bar and that'll kind of balance and then just push down on this, get it to slide under and you see the hole, like that's not quite lined up, but I can push it and it's easily lined up. So we'll go ahead and drop those screws back in and uh, figure out what we're going to do next. Before I jumped into hooking up the hoses, I did recall that we had these four 14 millimeter bolts. So we have the two on the top and we also have one here. Somewhere on the other side. After that point, now this is nice and sturdy because it's holding it against the uh, rails here and up on the fender piece. So just to confirm, I know my, actually, this is, that's for something else, ignore the hood piece, but just to set it down, looks like we're roughly where I wanna be. So now we're on to hooking up stuff. I did put this upper radiator hose in I'm gonna have to figure out where all these, I don't think this was ever plugged in. But we got our couple of fan connections at the bottom, hose connections, power steering pump. That might be it. We'll see, we'll see, we'll get there. Once you have everything connected back up, fill your coolant back up, and then, actually coolant's over there, but you know. And then get your headlights on. During storage, I did crack this tab on my headlight, so after this video, I mean, I have everything lined up with how it should be, I'll just put a little bit of a JB Weld across that to hold that. But other than that, it's totally done. The electrical connections, don't forget your connection over here for the, uh, looks like a hood latch sensor clicks into there. 
which I'm going to be taking out here soon, but this is pretty much where we're at. Um, also, remember to reconnect your hood release. Once again, coming out on this car, we're going to get tucked up, so I didn't worry about attaching any of that. But that's pretty much what I have. Uh, oh, I do have to put my grill back in, but that's just pushing it in, I think. Uh, but regardless, there's my broken one. New one's now tucked up in here nice and pretty, even though you can't see it. There's all this other old crud in front of it, so you can't see the nice shiny part. But thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. I know there's some things I messed up on throughout this video, and some things I had to go back and correct that I might not have notated, even though I tried to notate them all. But uh, thank you for spending time, and I'll see you guys in a couple more weeks when my next video comes out. Thank you.